It's classic. Yo, welcome to the Hear Me Out Pod. Ever, 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 cast. Your boy AO in the motherfucking building. We got a special, special, very special guest today. Before we get to it, Shiraz, how you feeling today? Good, thank you. Great. John the Conscience. I feel great. I'm feel magnificent. Great. Lovely. How you Magnificent. Have- how am I? How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm real good. Today's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Today's going to be real fun. Uh, today we have a special guest. Uh, you may have seen him or you probably have seen him on, uh, you know, movies like Jack with the lovely, lovely J-Lo mm. and the talented Robin Williams, rest in peace. You've also probably seen him in Little Giants, the quarterback of the Cowboys. <laughs> You've also seen him on the beloved, most Bestest popular cartoon. Yeah, heard him on the most beloved popular cartoon, Recess. If you don't know, if she doesn't know what Recess is, she's probably too young for you, bro. (laughs) So you should kick her out the crib right now. Uh, Mr. Ricky Deshaun Collins, how you doing, brother? Voice of Vince LaSalle. What's What's poppin', man? What's good, family? Uh, You know, nothing. How you feeling today? Look, we were... Blessed to have you here today. Man, nothing but a phone call. Come on now. Mm. Hey. Yeah, it's not it's not coincidence. Your family. Are it's we a, telling people? Why I mean, would he? I don't why see would why not. Is, yeah, is it not a secret? No, that's cool. I just wasn't sure, you know. Mm. Try to make it seem like we got mad close. connections. Okay, yeah, my bad. Hold on, don't say yeah. that. Man. Nah, 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 nah. We're not related to nothing. It was this was it took us a long time to get Ricky in here. Busy, busy, busy schedule. Man. man. Lots of back and forths with his manager. Man, we had to go through a lot of channels to get him here today. He had a, a laundry list of uh, things Demands. he needed on his writer, right? All red Skittles and all pink Starbursts. It took a while to pick those out, but we got them. <laughs> I almost didn't come because y'all didn't have the M&Ms, but... Uh, we yeah, we had planes. Here. He had requested peanut. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you see what I got to deal with, John? Can see? you imagine? Like, come on, bro. Like, I don't ask for a lot, but like... <laughs> It's wild It's unprofessional on so many levels. <laughs> it is, man. It is. I don't even know how y'all have a pod. Like, my writer is all fucked up. Uh, <laughs> it's yo. the unprofessionalism for Yo, me. coming live from Dame Dash uh, Studios. West, West. West, West. Uh, hey, we want to actually start off with uh, recapping last week. We got a lot of feedback from our listeners about our petty conversation. Mm. Apparently, a lot of Shiraz's followers are fans of pettiness because they were really happy about her putting a nigga's phone number uh, in the call list. I think they just thought I was very resourceful. I think it's creative. Can I tell you something? One of the managers of one of the call centers that I was working at hit me in the DM. He was like, yo, you just gave me a bright fucking idea. So he was like cheering me on. That's disgusting. <laughs> he liked it. Talk about unprofessionalism, Jante. Yo. No comment to that one. <laughs> Yo, they agree. Yeah, they felt it. The ladies felt it. I'm just imagining like my guy just like chilling at work or on a date or something, and he's getting mad telemarketing calls because well, of you. That is the point. You just oh, you was cock blocking from a that distance. That is the point. Wait, is he still getting the calls? Yes. <laughs> to this day, Yo. you can't answer that. How do you know? You don't know? I know him personally, and so uh, yes, he's still getting these calls. Yo, that's wild. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy. Crazy, like yo, I've I don't even own a house yet. He's like, bro, I I don't own a house, but yet I got these roofers calling me to try to put a new roof and solar on my shit. <laughs> I never inquired. <laughs> I can't call it. I don't know. Hey, uh, John, say, Shrey's got your number. She does. So don't, don't piss her off. Bro. Change it. Oh, Some yeah, people never. were in the Change comments it. saying they're glad I don't have their number. <laughs> Queen Petty but in the building. That to everybody, you got to earn that. That's a prize for that you. Yo, that's, that's a, a wild no, prize. That's a wild consolation. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool off of that. Yo, y'all see what's going on this week? Speaking of Petty. Yo, can we thank everybody for sharing the podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Did it for real, it was like over 30, 40 people shared. Just on Instagram. That's not even Twitter. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Very much appreciate it. Hey, Thank man. Guys. Get us popping. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> and, sh- and share. And like, share. subscribe, and share. Nice. But back to the petty, yo. Uh, Sweetie and Quavo, y'all trying? I, I know uh, Ricky has some things to say. I'm going to get to him. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not... Okay. It's not pettiest life. I'll start by saying this. I literally cringe when I see young celebrity couples get together at the beginning. It makes me cringe. 
Because ninety percent of the time, it, it never work. works out. Especially if y'all both famous. Like, think about it. Yeah, at this point, I really feel like women get in relationships with these dudes just hoping that their dude is smart enough to not get caught. Because you're both Yee. celebrities. Look, I know you're going to feel away. Are we back away. on this? You're both celebrities. You're on tour. Y'all not touring together. Y'all are doing, y'all are literally apart two, three, four months out of the year, maybe more. You expect this nigga to not be hitting this free vagina that's thrown at him every day, all day, and he's inebriated. He's rapping about the lifestyle Sounds he like lives. like a bunch of excuses to me. Is it excuses or is it just the truth? That w- that maybe women aren't willing to face because they have built up this... Yo, is Quavo comfortable with his chick getting in him while he's gone? You think she's Is that not? acceptable? Yeah, do you think she wasn't? Let's not speak on Sweetie specifically, but... In general. Yeah, in general. Do you think these women aren't? They're Quiet. on tour for y'all are more sexual than us. Um, y'all think y'all don't want a little I think ladies green bean action? Themselves and have more self control than men do. Yes. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Big fucking cap <laughs> sombrero yeah. again. I'm serious. Shante, speak on this. The conscience. You being um, a lot of the conscience. Honestly, I feel like probably I, I would say like for a celebrity woman, it is in her best interest to like kind of chill out hmm. a little bit and not be too out there like that. Why more so women than men though? Because they I mean, men are I think I feel like men are more likely to be put on blast nah, than a woman men is. men talk more than women do. Nah, but it's the difference between men talking and women trying to expose niggas. There are more women that will expose niggas and not have to deal with like the, the feedback compared to if a man exposed a woman. Because a man exposing a woman you're looked at like Bro, you yeah, guys don't do that. Yeah, niggas don't do that. So it's it's safer for women to do it than it is for men. Speaking it's of safer, ex- yeah. Speaking of exposure, side note: you hear your boy got to put on blast too. Who? I can't stand this dude. And I say I That's I like funny. everybody. What's that dude's name to be giving all these women advice? The big buff dude. Oh, the black dude. Yeah, oh, I heard he got caught. God, he gets on my I forgot nose, his name man. though. Uh, you can't bring him up. You don't know. Like talking Jack, about the YouTube Jack, guy. Yeah, he's yeah. like Jax. What's his name? Look him up. What's Fuck. his name? I, I, I only know of this guy because I know that he degrades women. He doesn't. That's all I hear about him. No, no he all gives he them does, like really he gives good like, advice. He gives shit. advice on relationships and love and how to be faithful and what to look for in a good What's man. What's his angle, though? <laughs> Why you got that smile on your face? That smile on your face tells trash. me something is not she's right. trash. Okay, I agree. I agree. He, he is, right? Right. Yeah. How do you give advice on love and relationships and be cheating on your wife? Wow, yo, that happens Derek Jackson. all the time. Jackson. Oh yeah, Derek Jackson. There you go, hundred percent. He got mad exposed. Bad. I don't know exactly what happened. His side chick put his business out there in mm-hmm. her blog, hundred percent. In a what? In her blog. Yeah, see, that's what he gets. You see how it's more dangerous for men to be out here doing dirt? Excuse me, if a woman hooks up even with one guy, her reputation is done. You guys can go from chick to chick to chick. And everything just be all right. Is that not because the woman takes him back? <laughs> I said chick to chick to chick, sir. Is it not because the main takes him back? No. If the woman forgives him, society forgives him. Facts. They don't really got no choice but to. Yo, someone said that's why uh, Asa been real quiet while this shit's popping off with, been mad quiet with Quavo. Sweetie and Quavo. He probably you see the meme? <laughs> you see the, wait, did you see the meme? You know that Draymond meme where he's talking to KD in his ear and he's like tapping on yeah. his Yeah. <laughs> like, this is how you get Austin her back. trying to get Quavo. <laughs> how to teach him how to get Sweetie back. <laughs> how to get out of this shit. I was dead, yo. Quavo not listening to none of that. Yo, honestly, that was mad petty for them to, for Sweetie to put that shit on Twitter, though. That's petty. That's what that petty mean? shit I'm talking about. She started that entire, like, and I know because Jante she hates said gossip, but I just hate, I don't like that shit. Yeah, he, she didn't have to put him on front street like that. Anytime your business is out there, and it's not supposed to be like that. But you also got to look at the type of person she is, right? If that's how she moves, how can you not expect that? But Think I, about the people you deal with. But if when your she girl moved, is when always, she moved like that? Though? If your girl's always on Instagram, Twitter, putting her business out there, how she feels, what you bought her today, you think it's not coming out when you mess up? I feel like all women is like that. Speaking of what he bought her, I think it definitely sent the repo man to get his Bentley back. I don't blame him. It's not a gift. <laughs> I was alone? It was nah, alone. it's not. You know it's what a gift a is? Gift. No, let me tell you why it's not a gift. A gift is something I give you, right? That type of purchase is your name on the deed. 
Hmm. Then it's not a gift. Quavo owns it. That's 100%. a great point. 100%. That's an excellent point. 100%. Go yeah. get it back. That's my name. Hey, go get my car real quick. Yo, who cares if she's putting this man's business out there if he's cheating on her? That means there's other people who know she's being violated. How sick is that? Because it's different when it's put out to the public. It's already in the, the public. Masses. These men no, are not, they're not doing nothing quietly. There's always room to assume, but there's no confirmation. So you can't. It's different when you confirm it. When that party actually confirms that, yo, this nigga's been cheating. Well, and then not to mention, it's only coming from her side. Because we all saw the interview. She was looking at young Justin Combs like a, like a snack, bruh. That happens when things are done. Then, yeah, at that point, she didn't give a fuck. She knew yeah, what she was doing. Yeah, but that ain't cool. Sit your ass down. Stay. B- no, 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 no. You wasn't don't embarrass- sitting down. No, 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 You was no, not no, behaving no. yourself. No, 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 no. Yo, yo, don't, at least Quavo don't. was respectful enough to cheat in private. You gonna cheat in public with your eyes? Oh, no, but wait, sir. we don't, we don't God. know if she actually cheated. You just talking about the look? I'm talking right? about the look, the fact that she dated him while he was while they were both at SC. Sweetie and Justin used to date, but that's old. Yeah, but old boy that was doing an interview was asking questions like, "When was your? Did you have a one night stand in college?" But that's they were at that's S- a real specific question. But to they ask were somebody. at SC like after I was at SC. But that's a real specific before question. they started dating. Rick, that's a very specific question. Did you ever have a one night stand in college, and your college boyfriend is right there? I think it's a college question. I think that interview. I think the interviewer dude was friends with Justin. And he was like, "Yo, <laughs> I'm trying to get back in." <laughs> oh my god! I need you to rekindle that flame for me. And then they started talking about cancers. That nigga doing the interview was definitely throwing lobs to young Mr. Combs the whole night to try to get Sweetie to remember that old thing. I just think it's never good when you put your private business in the public. Ever. Period. It doesn't matter what it is. Anytime, the first person to do that, I think, is always in the wrong, regardless of what the other person did. I can't nod my head any harder than what I'm doing right now. Like, Reezy, if you and I have beef, right, at the crib, right, and we fighting... That beef shouldn't go outside the door. 100%. We can fight when we get back. 100%. Okay. I'd agree with that. You would? I would. You put no, you, you do. Yeah, it's I either would. I do or I would. Oh, no. <laughs> see? There's an if there. Right. If. Maybe. Is there ever a time that's appropriate to put your private business in the public eye? When it's negative. Is Hell there ever no. an appropriate time? No. 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 But that has a lot to do with self-control. But you said no. I can know what's wrong, but can I control what's about to happen? No. I think that speaks to maturity. <clears throat> Don't clear your throat. I just... <laughs> you parched. <laughs> <laughs> you right? Because <laughs> are you good? John, say you agree? I no, agree. but it's like... I do. Yeah. I feel like um, anytime you uh, put put your business out there like that, even if you feel wrong, you you kind of open in the floodgates to a lot of like outside noise, a lot of extra drama that comes with that. So it's, it's never really a good thing. It's not even just that. It's embarrassing to me or to whoever is putting that shit out. 100%, especially when you know they're probably going to be back together by the time this podcast comes out. Comes out. I hope. Ah, see, that's not my relationship. They're couple goals. <laughs> Yo. A lot of y'all niggas say couple goals. Y'all still want that? <laughs> that's y'all goal? Huh? Not me. That's not my... I don't huh? call no, people goals. Everybody else reposting. Oh, I want to... I love Quavo and Saweetie. They're so cute together. Someone said <laughs> uh, with that diet, she wasn't back. built for uh, the long haul. I was dead. Vinny said that. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> Wild. Wow. Hey, you know... Anyway, like John Say said, you open up the floodgates. That's it, hundred percent. And I just, I, I wish them well. If they get together, if they get back together, I hope they work it out. I hope they, you know, stay a hundred. But if they don't, everybody moves on. Everybody's better for it. Hmm. Hmm. Y'all learn something, right? We are the sum of our experiences. Learn hmm. what that man was about. Yep, she learned. Wow. She Some, learned somehow. Shiraz turned into, <laughs> into him. <laughs> It's, it's, it's crazy. Yo, uh, his sister though was coming at Sweetie saying, 
that she's a wild girl. Yeah. But that's just how, then that's how shit goes. Like that's his sister. It, that's what Jonathan said. There, yeah. Opening floodgates. Now mm-hmm. you got your families beefing. So now niggas are going to have to defend their families. Yeah. Now it's getting deeper. Like it's right. not even just between y'all two. Now right. it's like. People got to pick sides. People got to pick sides. Now it's, there's, it's even harder to reconcile now at this point. Yeah. Even if y'all wanted to get back together. Even if this was a publicity stunt. Now it's now it's a little further a publicity stunt. Talking about you cheating on me. Oh, it's happened many times. No, one hundred percent. You don't think it sells records? One hundred percent. I think it's about time for me. How to embarrassing come out with is shit. that for a woman? I think it's, I don't think that I don't think you a think woman this would hasn't helped Sweetie's record sales. No, Sweetie already said, bro. If you cheat on me, you wasted my time. So I, she's already gotten paid. She woke up to a couple hundred thousand dollars in a bank account after she got cheated on. Is anybody re-looking at the song Back to the Streets now? Is yeah. that her song or his song? It's her <laughs> song. I don't know her music. I... It's her and her and uh it's her and her Janae. And Doja. Oh yeah, Janae. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh yeah, Janae. the numbers went up, definitely. Right. For sure. Someone said that uh Cardi and Saweetie are what's keeping the Migos relevant. Big cap. Who's checking for them, though? Big fucking cap. Who's checking for them? Niggas are checking for Migos. Migos they are, are already solidified. Yeah, Migos are Are they? Solidified. No, they're not. Let's, let's be so okay, real. So, okay. No, they're Relevant not. Relevant as far as clickbait, maybe. But music? Migos can put out whatever the fuck they want. That shit's going up. Regardless of Cardi B and... and Whenever they want. Yeah. yeah. Nah. They've, already sol- they've already solidified themselves. Don't make me play T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Like what? Well, thank you guys for tuning into our petty episode. Yeah, we appreciate that, man. That was nice. That was nice. Uh, Let's get into our guest here. Pause. So, uh, (laughs) Mr. Collins, (laughs) Mr. Collins, Mr. Vince LaSalle. Wow, full AKA. Dun dun. Full government. Right. Yo, when that bell rung, it was time. It was time. <laughs> it was time. It was it was yeah. eight, 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 eight or eight, eight thirty on Saturday mornings. Came, I think it came on eight. I don't know. It was just too early for me now. But hey, fuck Miss Finch. <laughs> I think it was eight though. I, I think, think it was eight. eight. Yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs> yo, do you do you guys realize kids these days don't have it as good as we did? Like they don't Hell have not. one Saturday morning. They don't have TGIF. TGIF. They don't have none boy. of that. Yeah. What do you do on a Friday if you like 11? Instagram? They all They're got on YouTube. Now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they got iPads. They be on the iPads being crafty. It's wild. Being crafty. Yeah. That's a good name Ooh. for it. Being crafty. I don't like that shit. Being dirty as hell. <laughs> wow. Nasty you sit down and watch Hang Mr. Cooper. It's what you need to do. See? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Drop, oh, yeah. I see what you did see right what there. I did? Drop that. See in what the I house. Did? Yeah, we be in the house. Shh, hey, we chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Yo. Yo. Family ties as well. Man, you just, yo, you you used to watch Saturday cartoons, you'd be gone without a trace. You feel me? Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going <laughs> on? Cookie, cookie. Oh. Yo, yo, hey, ain't nothing to Call a G, him. Jack. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> yo, wild. Keep it going. Man. He's quick. Yeah, I'm that's quick a, with it. That's wild. Yeah, man. It's all good, so man. how was it working on resets, man? Yeah, you have a laundry list of laundry credits. Laundry list of credits. We was on IMDb. I shit few, I didn't man. even know about. I got a couple, man. I've, I've been really, uh, I've been blessed to have some really dope life experiences. Um, Recess was definitely one of them. Probably one of the highlights. How'd you get started? Come on now. Oh, you know I can't. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, because, you know, this is like old school. This is 90s. This is what we grew up with. Yeah. But when I see in your face when we're talking about it, like there's no resentment, no weird like feelings towards it now, like ah, oh, this stuff again. Like yeah, nah, it that's... feels like there's really good energy. It's it's love, it. man. It it was a time period where you didn't really see a lot of people who look like us on cartoons. Yeah, and it was probably one person on each cartoon, and to have the opportunity to represent us to our generation, I, I don't take that lightly. I think that was super dope, man. <laughs> yeah. we, we were talking about it. We yesterday. were talking about that. Hey, so yeah. so honestly, so back when I was watching Recess. I thought Vince was the coolest nigga on there. <laughs> he, wasn't he the only? <laughs> Yo, only nigga on there slash coolest nigga the on whole there. School. But right. watching it now, I'm like, this don't sound like my cousin, bro. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, oh my God, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so there's two questions there, right? Yo, yeah, no, nah, there's a couple. There's, <laughs> Wait, let me answer the first one. Hold on. Let me well, answer the first, the first one. one. Where'd you, how'd you start? How'd, how'd you, you start? get in? How'd, how'd so, recess happen? So basically, for those who don't know, um, Kyle and I, our grandmother was like an OG in the acting game. She was a 
actress. She was a, a classical talent singer. booker. She was a classical singer. She did all that. So we kind of grew up around it. Uh, around like five or six, I was watching TV with her and I was like, yo, grandma, I want to be on TV. And she was like, all right, whatever. Like, you know, I'm working. Mm. A year later, I was six. I was like, yo, grandma, like, I, I want to do that. I want to be on TV. She was like, all right, all right, whatever. And uh, it's another year went by. I was like, yo, Gma, <laughs> that's what we call our grandma. I want to be on TV. I can do that. And um, at that point, she started taking me seriously. Uh, she started training me. She's the only acting coach I've ever had. Um, she took me to my first agent. Went in audition for the agent. They signed me on a spot. I went for my first audition two weeks later. Booked that. The rest was kind of it. Just kind of flowed like that. You know, when I think of uh, your grandmother, I think of like a poised woman, even now in her late age. Let me tell you She's something. She's still very poised. <laughs> She's still let, let me tell you something about Gma. <laughs> For those of you who know our grandmother, she is fly <laughs> to the T. Yes. Yes. With the hair and the lipstick, always on point. Always. Always. Shout out to Grandma. I appreciate you. Yeah. Shout out, man. 100%. But yeah, that's how I got started, man. So once you got on the recess, how was that like introduction? Like how did you how did you feel when you read that script? I felt like it was me. It's weird because keep in mind at the time, I'm, you know, kind of how old was I when we started? I was like in middle school mm-hmm. when this started. And everything they were going through I could relate to. Like I was always one of the athletic kids in my class and mm-hmm. I was always one of the popular kids in my class, and I just I felt like I could embody the character. So bringing that to the role, it wasn't difficult. It was just like me being me. Yeah, it was natural. Yeah, it was natural. And what's really cool is, little known fact, Vince didn't look like that at all. Like the first drawing, <laughs> he, no he looked nothing like that. Hundred percent. The dope. The dopest thing about um, our animators was once everybody was cast. All these characters changed. Mm. Wow! To that reflect helped. the yeah, the actual voices, person. The voice so actors. so Vince had like a Vince had like a low ball fade. Back in the day, I had a high top fade, just like that. So wow. that was the damn. I didn't know that. Yeah, I w- I thought they cast it based on the the look of the, the look character. of the character because I met a lot of the characters. Yeah, you pretty much met except everybody. For Spinelli. Yeah, I never met Spinelli. Yeah, but yeah, like Gus, literally little dorky kid. Yeah. TJ was. One of the Lawrence brothers, so he was one of the cool... Shout out to Andy. What's up, my guy? Yeah, and then Gretchen, actually, she sounds, looks, acts just like yeah. Gretchen Which does. Which TJ with the glasses? With the, with the hat. TJ's oh, with the, the cool hat. He's the cool one. The... Yeah. He was one of the Lawrence brothers. Oh. Yep. He's a... And Vince was not number one. That was my favorite number. Oh, so you had that? Yeah, Jeez. that added too. So, so little, little touch. Did you feel there was an expectation of you playing... The only black character yes. on the, on the or show? Or that maybe you were... A token, like, was there some type of responsibility or influence, like you felt, or was it like above your head at that time? At that age, I didn't feel it. Mm-hmm. There's no I way you can roll. feel that. I got a roll. There's, there's no way you can feel that at 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 twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When we got to later seasons, when I was like sixteen, seventeen, I kind of, I kind of started feeling it. Like, oh yeah, stuff. like it's just, it's just me. I'm the athlete. Yeah, it's like got to represent. But at a young age, you're just enjoying the work. Yeah. You're just enjoying being around your your co stars. You're enjoying being at the studio. It was fun to get out of school. I what? Come on. What is man. it like? Like hang, What is it like going to record a show? Like can it's you dope. see other like these other kids are. Experiencing yeah. The, same the cool thing, thing about uh, recess, uh, the way Paul and Joe did it, they created. Shout out by the way, if they're watching this. I don't. They're probably not watching this. No, nah, they will. Think they, they will. will? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Paul and Joe. Um, they actually made they they made sure that as much as possible we all recorded together. So imagine okay. the whole cast in a room just like this. So much fun. Yeah, a ton of fun. Like between actual recording and like breaks and just laughing, it was snacks. great. It was a good time. Yeah, Yay. I was I was there for the snacks. Snacks was fire. I loved when craft I had, service I was, was tagging along. Dude, six kids. Craft service was fire. <laughs> <laughs> craft services. <laughs> we were wondering if you had to conform in any way. Never. Not once. No need to. Like, conform to what? You're a kid. Whatever standard they had for you were the character. Like, what were they expecting as the character? Like, what what were they hoping to pull from you personally? To be Authenticity. Based? I think a lot of what makes the show great is that each character is in every kid. There's always someone that a kid can relate to. There's, you know, 
There's Vince, who's the cool athletic guy. There's Gus, who's like, you know, the dorky safety guy. There's Andy, who's the cool, you know, kind of smooth guy of the playground. There's the tomboy. You know, there's the big guy who's lovable, but he's a mm. little little bigger than everybody. Yeah. Like, there's something for everybody to relate to. Can't forget about Randall. Yo, and I want to ask about King Bob. That's my guy. What does that mean, though? To have a, to have someone that just oversees the rules, the, the king of playground. The playground. You think yeah. it's some kind of like sub I wanna know. meeting? What do you think? Watching, watching it now as an adult, yeah, you feel like there were like hidden, hidden like uh, messaging. suggestions, messaging. But as an adult, if you're as an adult, maybe. But if you're in fourth grade, right? You understand. Yeah. Sixth graders different. are dope. And there's always that top sixth grader. That's mm. true. That's in anything, right? You're talking about life, talking about work. There's that top dog. And that's what King Bob represented. Mm. Yeah, the was hierarchy. There, was there exactly. anyone on the show you didn't get along with? Nah. Everybody was dope. Yeah, keep in mind, like, we kind of, we, not kind of, we grew up together. Yeah. Like, everybody did. So, we all got along. Do you still keep in touch with any of them now? Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to Andy every now and then. I get, shout out my guy, Andy. That's super dope, man. Andy is TJ, right? Andy's TJ, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he still working? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's in the streets. He's got an album out. He's singing too. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, come on. Very you know nice. the Lawrence Brothers is just, yeah, they're they staple, always, man. They're good. Yeah. They're good. That's what's up. So, uh, what about the benefits of being Vince in your real life? Oh, <clears> my. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, let me ask you, Are you? what's your current relationship status, Mr. Mr. Collins? Are whoa, you single? Are you in whoa, a relationship? Whoa, whoa. The ladies want to know. Ladies don't want to know anything. The ladies want to know. Is that what they want to know? Leave his private life private. Didn't we just talk about not putting private life in the public eye? We just talked about Is that, that private, though? Whether you're single or not? Yeah, it depends on the person. All right. So let's revert back to... Uh, <laughs> let's revert back to when you were, you know, in your the heyday of Vince LaSalle. Yeah. How did that affect your relationship? Yo, has anyone asked you to do the voice? While having sex. Wow. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> that's wild. Um, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> and, and if they ask, I'll probably get up and leave. That's wild. <laughs> like for a, who's who's imagining banging a fifth a fourth, cartoon? A fourth grade. Hey, a that's lot wild. of niggas had crushes on Lola Bunny. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that's Am a I thing, lying? Though. I'm not Sexualizing lying. Sexualizing cartoon characters? Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's cosplay. I get it. All that. Yeah, 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 all that, that the, shit. The new Lola Bunny isn't as curvy as the OG one. That's weak. Because Lola should, Bunny was bad. That should never be a conversation. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? <laughs> Y'all are wild. <laughs> Yo. Hey. They got a whole TikTok trend on about Bugs Bunny right now. Oh, my God. But yeah, no one's asked me to uh, do the voice. <laughs> While having what sex. do you say That's to people when they ask creepy. you to do the voice in like person, like growing up now, like now? Well, here's adult. here's the thing. I'm sure you no can. one really asked me because no I've one. I asked you and you won't do it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you've been asking me for years, I'm not doing it. Um, what's crazy, Reezy, is like unless you like know me, know me. Yeah, you wouldn't have any idea. You wouldn't have any clues. So you would have no reason to ask. Hmm. Okay, what? Okay, but what if? What if when she finds out? What if when she finds out? She your asked. wife. I so don't your know. Wife. Like, I would be curious. I'm trying to put myself in that. Your that wife position. is like, I'd be, come I'd on. I'd be curious. Come on, babe. Maybe I never got to watch the cartoon. Act, but I just want to just, just hear it. Just I would, go, uh, out one I would time. go right to Disney Plus and start streaming for it. <laughs> <her. laughs> Shout out to Yo. Yo, Shout that out. guy is good. Yo. Yo, he's good. That was hot. Disney that was hot. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to uh, <laughs> we can now tag no, Disney in this post now. Where? Yeah. Shout out to the royalties. Please go stream <laughs> on Disney Plus. Yo, I'm dead. Yo, that's so hard. That's so cool. Yeah, that's hella dope. Reset. When did they stop syndicating? It's it was on for like yeah. Like, it, we uh, were 11, in syndication. We were in syndication for years. Um, I don't really know how many because I looked at it. It was only going from what 97 to 2001. I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like been, but it was on ABC forever. Yeah, it was on ABC for years. Uh, it was on Disney Channel for years. Um, I think there was only a small gap between Disney Channel and now Disney Plus. What streaming. was the difference between recording the show, like the episodes? Because I didn't, even, I didn't even remember that when they filmed that when they played the episodes, they were only ten minutes. Yeah, so they were two episodes in two episodes thirty minutes, which was yeah. which is great because keeping attention span. When we, me and Shiraz were watching it, she was like, "It seems like the, it's sped up." Yeah, but it's like, no, it's just like the reactions forward. are so much quicker. We realized, 
or it, it seemed like I heard that the episodes were kind of sped up, like the reaction times, how quickly it moved from scene to scene. Yeah. yeah. And I told her, I was like, it's not sped up. It's just the way kids' attention spans were. Mm-hmm. They're, I mean, they're even shorter now, but even back then, they had to keep it to where you were always moving, like the scenes always changed. So it was just quick. So... Uh, do you do you feel like there was a difference in how you were shooting the actual episodes compared to the movies? Because you guys have three movies too. Yeah, no, not at all. There wasn't a difference. It just took longer. I mean, like an episode you can shoot, you can record in a day. Mm. Like the movie took a few weeks to kind of finish. How long does one episode take? I'm just curious. To record with, with a bunch like of a, kids on top of that too. Yeah, it's not even it, like it, professional adults. it depends on <laughs> how silly we're being, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would say no more than like few hours oh that's not bad still yeah. either way not bad wow. yeah a few hours that's dope yeah their studio was in hollywood it was right on nickelodeon right by universal oh never mind it wasn't on it. nickelodeon you weren't shooting at new nickelodeon though. nah we didn't record we recorded at a, another studio like off of ventura oh it was ventura okay yeah, yeah. north hollywood yeah it was north Ho- yeah mm-hmm. i remember so did uh recess have any beefs with any other kids cartoons hmm. first, <laughs> first, okay two part answer First of all, no. <laughs> and second, they don't want it with the gang. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. No, nobody cool wanted. Kids. Yeah, nobody wanted with us. Come on. Any tea? Anything that we wouldn't know that happened behind the scenes with, with recess? No, no, Not, no. Nobody even wet themselves. They were kids. Like, no, no story. What? <laughs> what? Wet, <laughs> wetting themselves? Yo, like, no story. We're not <laughs> toddlers. Yo, sure. Were Yo. there any, were there any flirting? Was there any flirting going on between characters? I know Spinelli was like 30 or something, right? Spinelli yeah, was no, a grown she, woman. She's, she's always been older than us. You know, that's the same person who plays... Uh, uh, what's Bobby? King of the Hill. Same person. Oh, okay. Yeah. The yeah. son? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, same person. So who else played multiple characters? That um, we wouldn't know? Multiple characters? Or was there anyone? On the show, I mean, we technically all play multiple characters. Because like all the little side characters, it was yeah. normally one of us. Mm-hmm. You just couldn't tell. Um, but like in terms of main characters. Who played you know, Ashley A? Was Ashley A really Ashley A in, in real life? I don't remember. Really? Yeah, you don't remember don't, who Ashley A was? I don't remember. Nah. Scandalous. I mean, oh. I don't remember who played her. I remember who she was. Was she bad? I, can't, I don't remember. She was probably a little kid. I probably shouldn't ask that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like on the rug, on the Rugrats, the main person was playing like three, yeah, four different played, roles. Yeah. Even yeah. now on Netflix, there's a show called um, Paradise PD. Mm-hmm. It's like an adult animated comedy. Yeah, yeah. But you can tell that the same person is voicing like four or five different characters in mm-hmm. the same episode. Yeah. Like you can hear that. That's how it is on Family Guy too. The same. I don't know if I like that. I like everybody doing their own character not like well family guy you can't tell yeah that's the problem though you can't tell with like this oh yeah it's not okay yeah you could tell it's like you're talking they're reusing a voice yeah yeah i think it's dope when you you can't tell yeah but i I think it's it's very uh it's very telling of an artist's range yeah you know if you can play multiple characters it's, it's amazing that's real talent man a lot of people look at animation versus you know like live on screen filming and say oh well it's not it's not as hard i'm like you playing multiple characters like you have to bring to life what you see with your words paper yeah yeah like you see it animated but if it doesn't come across the same way when you hear it then it doesn't match up it seems like it'll be a little harder um just for the fact of like calculating your timing Mm -hmm. right like trying to figure out how to deliver stuff when you have really no context there's just you and the script. Yeah, it's words in front of you. Yeah. There's yeah. beats, there's emotions, like or emotional episodes or fun episodes. Like, how do you really let someone hear your emotion? You gotta take yourself there. So compared to your, you know, on film acting and then your animation acting, what was the what were the some of the, your biggest challenges going from one to the other? <sighs> one to the other. I think honestly, just just understanding that, like right here, we're sitting here, right. This mic is gonna pick up everything. Whether you're on screen or you're on theater, there's a need to fill up the room, right? You don't have to do that with animation. You can be as loud as you want to be, but this mic does everything. You don't have to really show it with like physicality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can be as loud as I want to be without you breaking. Spill the the you can fill the space with your voice. Instead exactly. Of it. So you had an acting Action. coach, right? So. Yeah. 
even having an acting coach during animation, doing animation, mm-hmm. what were some things that you found difficult to achieve or to like or accomplish? Translate. Yeah, to, like because I used to be in the car when you and grandma would be practicing this shit, and I would be like, "Oh my god, I keep hearing the same line over and over. <laughs> I want to shoot myself in the face." <laughs> so, like, what was it that you guys were trying to make sure you got? Like, what was it that you were? What do? You, what are some things that you remember her trying to drill into you that you were, you know, finding difficulties? Yeah. with? Yeah. I mean, not necessarily, not necessarily finding difficulties, but just depending on the acting style that you were trained in, right? There's in every scene, there's intention, reason, and conflict. You're not just talking to be talking. It's why are you talking? Mm-hmm. What's you know? What's your goal? What's preventing you from getting your goal? You know, what happens when you achieve your goal? How does that come across? Mm-hmm. Like all these separate emotions and these separate beats, as we call them, you can have five different beats in one line. And that's why you practice it so many times. That could be upset, happy, angry, and sad in the same line. And that's what you practice. You practice finding those little beats within the script. That's what makes great actors. If you can see emotions change and hear them change, even in one line, imagine like imagine watching a movie with your eyes closed. Mm-hmm. That's how you know who's really, really done their homework and who's really studied their craft. It's not so much the physical. That's great. But if you can close your eyes and really get yeah, a picture like of what's stupid. happening, yeah, that's 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 the homework. That's the hard part. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So you uh, so besides recess, did you was there anything else you wanted to tell us about recess? Nah. That's, uh, <laughs> 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 All right, funny funny story. John said you're gonna laugh at this. So right when I turned 18, obviously we started going out, you know, in the city. You know, young 18, got a little change in your pocket, whatever. Um, I was at this club with some friends of mine and one of my homegirls was like, oh my gosh, Rick, like, I know you're an actor. My boy acts. I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, you should come meet my boy. Like, he does voice acting too. I was like, where? Yeah. So I went up to like, what's up, man? What's your name? He was like, I remember his name. And, uh, we were just started chopping it up and she was like, oh my gosh, tell him, uh, tell him what, what role you play. He was like, I'm Vince on recess. <laughs> <laughs> Jose. <laughs> I'm dead. No, he <laughs> like, wasn't. Like, yo, he looked me dead in my eye and told me he was Vince on recess. I'm dead. That's what? crazy. Facts. He was lying? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Shiraz. Oh, my God. Or, or we're lying. What kind of lie is that, though? What? Crazy. Yo, that was crazy. It's wild. That was my first time really understanding, like... That was your first How fake Instagram you page. <laughs> he, well, he didn't know... That it was him. He, like, didn't, know he didn't know that was me. Vince. Like, he didn't, like, what are the odds? Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, what are the What are the odds? He didn't know. That was his first spam Instagram page And my, right and my face was, I looked at him, I said, really? <laughs> he was like, yeah, man. I was like, I, I, you know, I'm I'm petty. Yeah, you read it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, 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 I roll with it. How was it? How's it working on the show? Oh, oh, I asked him all kind of questions. How'd you, that go? Please continue. (laughs) I asked him a bunch of questions, and uh, I was like, yo, bro, like, what's your name again? I was like, yo, I really want to look up your IMDb credits. And he was like, oh, no, you ain't going to do that. I was like, no, no, I'm going to do it. I'm petty. Y'all know it's me. So I looked him up. I was like, it says dude named Ricky plays Vince. Yeah. And I was like, this guy? And I showed him a picture of me. Oh, my God. Because I'm petty like that. And his face just, like, his face just kind of sunk. Stone. Yeah. That's what that it was is. funny. Dead. That's going to be, we got to get that animated. There's somehow. so many things <laughs> to lie like, about. Like, what are the odds? Yeah. yeah. The Shiraz, the Vince from we got to get that animated because it'll be like the Spider Man pointing at Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> right. You? With Vince? Like you mean? Uh-huh. Like you mean? Like, um, Yo, that'd be great. That's wild. But I, I realize it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's not a lot, but it's people out here capping. You know, like I did this, I did that until you come across the real thing. Hey, so that brings me to a question. Who was your biggest like arch nemesis in real life going after animation roles? Honestly, no one. Really? You didn't have like a like there wasn't like another young black dude that was like I, doing okay, animation okay. like you so that you were into it. I honestly couldn't tell you because one, I mean, like you kind of you see other people at the audition, mm-hmm. but if you really think about it, like during that time, what was really out, right? Recess was out. Um, hey Arnold was out. Um, the you home. Had the, no, you had no beef with Gerald. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't audition for that <laughs> role. Did. Shout out! Shout out to Gerald, the home. Yeah, almost I actually know the guy you guys who did are that. Similar. Yeah, we're yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. House. I actually know. Like it, the funny thing is, and, like, it's really small. Yeah. Kind of if thing. you were black and in voiceovers at the time, you kind of knew everybody who was who. 
Like, and we all, like, pretty much, like, looked up to Cree Summer. And obviously, you guys know who Cree Summer is. She's, I know the like, name, but I don't... She is, like, the GOAT of voiceover acting, man. She's in Rugrats. She's in... If you name a show, she's probably done it. Mm. Like, she's done everything. Um, between Cree and, like, Kevin, Kevin Michael Richards, who's in everything. Like, we looked up to those guys. So, you kind of knew who everybody was. But there wasn't really a lot of roles. Like, like I said, it was Recess Out. It was Hey Arnold. Rugrats was out. And then the other show that came out after recess, I booked that too. So I don't really yeah, know. Phantom. <laughs> I don't really know who else I was competing I with. Seen, you have other credits like yeah. SpongeBob. I was surprised. Yeah. Happy Feet. Yeah, I was. In yeah, like, what was Happy I'm Feet? Like, I didn't yo, know about Happy Feet. Recess. I'm like, yo, he has so much like, other oh. stuff. Yo, you, you like, know, got money, money. And it's Serato. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was a penguin, college boy. I didn't know you was a penguin. I had no idea you was out there. Yeah, that happy feedback is different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the first one too, bro. The 06 one. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, but Recess and, and Danny Phantom were probably two of the biggest cartoons. He was Tucker and Danny Phantom for yeah. those that other black kid. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, hey, somebody got to represent. They kept it in the family. Yeah, why, nah. Why not me? Yeah. Yeah, facts. I feel it. Somebody well, asked me, was it weird going from Disney to Nickelodeon? That, like, yeah. Do they felt like Nickelodeon stole you from Disney? And I was like, nah, it's not weird. It's just work. What was the difference in being in on Recess and Danny Phantom? Were there any like professional changes or uh, nah, it's it's the, it's the, it's all the same. Like work is work. Mm-hmm. I just think the dope part was being able to be like at Nickelodeon Studios all the time as a kid. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Bro, there's a basketball court. There's a, there's, there's a putting studio. green. I don't know where I, I was. I can only imagine. That's what yeah. Uh, like an arcade, like a... Yeah, there's art. Like Nickelodeon Studios back in the day was dope. It was super dope. Like That's a dope. theme park. Did you meet That's Amanda Bynes? I've never met Amanda Bynes, yeah. No. All that. Yo, Hey Arnold, everybody in Hey Arnold had a unibrow. Yeah, what was up with that? What was up with you know, that? Anthony Davis. <laughs> Wow. So what was it like working on Danny Phantom? I feel, I don't know. Maybe it was because I was younger, but it felt like Recess was more of a family than Danny Phantom was. It felt like to me Danny Phantom was just like really work. They're they're both families, um, but because I was older when mm-hmm. I was in Danny Phantom, it was work at the time. Like when you're little, you're just doing it because you enjoy it and you love it. Yeah. When you're older, like no, I'm getting paid for this. I'm getting paid well. Like this is a job. Mm-hmm. I got to come in here and do my job or I'm going to get fired. Like, I've seen people replaced on recess. You don't really think about it. But then as you get older, you're like, oh, snap. That's not the same person who was doing the voice a year ago. Have you done anything to rub any anyone the wrong way in growing up? Because a lot of child celebrities, like you said, you're young. You're doing. You're just move, going through the motions at a certain yeah. point. Have you done anything where it was like, yo, I probably shouldn't have did that or I shouldn't have said that? I mean... I don't think I have. I'm sure somebody will probably tell you I have. I mean, I was young growing up. Like, there was a time I I, I think I was late to some session and I was like, nigga, I'm here now. Like, let's work. Like, <laughs> oh whatever. My God. The little stuff like that. Like, that's, that, you know, that's the champ is here. <laughs> right. Like, it's little stuff, man. But, but, but I think, I think that the, the thing that counteracts that is having a strong foundation. Like, where you're from and who raised you and who keeps you in line, it has a lot to do with how you grow up. Like, you know, g my wouldn't go for none of that. Like, I've been to all the Hollywood parties as a kid. Like, like yo, g my they had A, B, and C, D. And she was like, well, you ain't doing none of that. I was like, you right. I'm not. Child stars and all that, they fall into this, like, dark space to where they can't get out of. What do you feel like? Or do you feel like you kind of dodged a bullet on when you got out and when you decided to, you know, Move on. Move on with. Move on. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't think I dodged a bullet. Uh, I just think I'm more so chose a different path. I mean, I think everybody has a path to choose for their life, right? At a certain point, you realize you may be done with something, or you may want to put a pause on something, whether that be a career or a relationship. And I think everyone just kind of chooses which way they want to go at that time. And that time for me, it was eh, let's, let's take a break on this. So you still plan on getting back to it? Yeah, I'm gonna get back to it. Uh, the fire is still there. I still love acting. I still love writing. That's what my degree's in. Um, but I think right now it's just more kind of just enjoying life, enjoying the moment. I mean, we just came out of a pandemic, man. People couldn't leave the house. Yeah. So it's like, how do you get back to society? How do you reacclimate? That's gonna be tough for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, the new normal is gonna surprise us all. Yeah, I think I, I people gonna be ready to lose their mind mm-hmm. when they like open up. When they open, open. Yeah.
So you were talking about SpongeBob earlier. No, I was uh my I was visiting my mother over the weekend. Oh, the Benny thing too. Uh over the weekend. And uh my sister was watching Hey Arnold and I'd noticed like all the characters had unibrows. Mm. But then that made me think about She Ra as like this new kids show they're like putting on Netflix. It's old. It's like super old school She Ra and He Man. Yeah. But in the updated version that they're doing for kids up to seven years old, there's two women who are making out. Mm. And, you know, I ha- yeah. I just, I don't know if that's what she needs to be seeing at five years old. Yeah, like at what point does inclusivity, you know, with all the movements that are going on, everybody wanting to make sure black people are included and all this stuff, and LGBTQ community, at what point is inclusivity become brainwashing? for this new generation coming up because, you know, you've mentioned it has to do with your upbringing, but when you're a child and you're so impressionable, you don't really know the difference if you're mainly being taught by your phone or, you know, most parents, you know, are busy and so most kids are, they're spending more times, more time with their tablet or online with social media than they are with their actual parents. So how do you really differentiate or how do you, how do how do kid you know how do you feel about kids being exposed to that at such a young age compared to what we were exposed to with cartoons because the messaging is totally different right 100 percent. because back you know we with recess we were watching it and they were there were messages you know talking about ec- the ec- economics of recess and how to hustle to get yourself the best ball <laughs> so you know now it's like they're trying to teach kids about relationships yeah i think it's twofold um I think the first part has to do with the time, right? Mm-hmm. Back then, things were just more honest, right? In terms of like what we were going through as kids, like recess was honest to what was happening on the playground, mm-hmm. right? It was just more of like a, a innocent time, you would say, right? So now, because of everything that's happening, and you know, like you said, inclusivity, I think it's more geared to education. And educating these kids about what's happening around them as opposed to being taken off being guard. brainwashed. Because like obviously, like we said before, if you have a strong foundation, nothing is gonna catch you off guard. You know what's right or wrong, right? You know where your morals, where your values come from. But if you don't have that background, then you literally it's it's monkey see, monkey do for mm-hmm. lack of better words. So what well, well you used an analogy um off camera. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so one of the uh, one of the great lessons that uh, R.G. Mont taught us uh, about morals and like you know what kind of makes you you and makes you tick. She always used to think of a square, right? So if you think of a square as being the outline for your moral compass, and inside that square you put a triangle, and anything that's bad are at the tips of that triangle. And if when that triangle starts to move, eventually those tips, they hit the walls of that square. And you can feel that. You can feel that touching that borderline. And that's how you know what's pushing you the wrong way. You don't need someone to tell you what's wrong or what's right. Your morals, how you've been raised, already have you in that square. And when things touch those lines, you can feel that. And that's something that's inside of you. And that's where the challenge comes in, though, because that square is being determined by social media and because, you know, like I yeah, said, TV. they're 100%. not being YouTube. taught as much by their parents as we were. We didn't have as much access to the outside world compared to these kids now. They know what's going on with everything. We didn't know shit. It's not even, it's not even we didn't have access. Our access to the outside world was different. Our access was yeah. go play at the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get back before the lights come on. Our outside world was immediate. It was what you saw right in front of you. Right. It wasn't what was going on with celebrities. It wasn't what was going on in New York or, you know, it, just, it wasn't that. It's way, it was, way it was your broad now, huh? Yeah. It was your surroundings. It was what was right in front of your face. The exposure is, is magnified. I could not imagine growing up right now. I mean, um, knowing my, what I know now, oh, no. I said it before. My sister was in a bubble bath. I step away, I come back. She's talking about, make sure you like and subscribe. Give me a hundred comments. Talking to herself in the bathtub while she's playing. 
I'm like, what is going on? That's Look, crazy. it's a sick thing. That's wild. I couldn't believe it. That's wild. I mean, that's also why like I'm not like super on social media. Like I don't care about likes. I get my likes in real life. Yeah, mm-hmm. but a five year old that that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's wild. Uh, was there any point in your career where you felt like um, you might have been blackballed or exed out of certain circles? I don't think he likes that term. Yeah, blackballed is such a bad term. I, I I don't think it was exed out or blackballed. I just think there are certain things and certain steps you have to take to get certain places. And I think for everybody, it's for some people there's a wall. Like for mm-hmm. me, I have a square. You know, like. No is a very hard word to hear in Hollywood. And when you have the balls to say no, it can rub a lot of people's feathers the wrong way. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that you feel like you may have said yes to that would have changed your life? Absolutely. Like what? Yeah, that is interesting. Because you have a laundry list of credits. SpongeBob, Happy Feet, uh, Danny. Well, we talked about Danny Vanna. But yeah. Yeses are wild. there were a few roles that uh, that I booked, and G Ma was like, "Nah, hmm. that's not it." Hmm. That popped. Ah, oh, yeah. What? Tell me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? Uh, so, I mean, obviously, you see everybody at the audition, and this and this is not to, you know, take away anyone else's talent. Mm-hmm. But um, back in the day, when we were auditioning for, uh, dang, what is that show? Uh, the show on Nickelodeon with the the doll, the talking doll. Teletubbies? No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 Cousin Skeeter? Cousin Skeeter. Oh. I actually booked Cousin Skeeter. That kid was your arch nemesis. He was not. Rob yes, was he homie. was. He was not. That dude was everywhere. I yeah. saw him every time. Yeah, that's my guy. We had all the same auditions, but I was actually already booked for something else. Mm. And it was kind of like, you know, which one are you going to say no to? And the decision was made. Obviously, I didn't. I was. I didn't have a choice. The decision mm-hmm. was made to say no to that. And you see how that. Yes to out. what? What did you end up taking? I ended up taking a, a role on a FBI Untold Stories. On what? FBI Untold Stories. It's, oh, oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was more challenging at the time, and that's that's what I wanted to go with. Yeah. I feel like that. That's for adults, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. It was moving on up. So how was it filming with J Lo? J Lo and the great. Uh, Let's start with J Lo. J Lo is amazing to say the least. Uh, she's a very kind person, very loving, especially to a kid. Like if you're a kid and you're working with adults, and keep in mind that time J Lo was becoming J Lo. Mm. Right, she was still Jenny from the block. Jennifer, I'm good. I'm good. Right? <laughs> you know? Jennifer. Um, yeah, she's not J Lo as we know her now, but back then she was just awesome, nice, talk to everybody, mm. help people run their lines, ran lines with you off camera, hung out with you at lunchtime. Like she just, she was super chill. That's cool. Did you get to hug J Lo? Oh, facts. This guy. Hugs were a He's big deal a for perf. kids. <laughs> Hugs were a really big deal for kids. Man. Of course, I hugged um, J Lo. Wow. And you, Jante, like, you like lined up perfectly. Eh? Bro. At that I'm lined up. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow right now. Wow. <laughs> 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 what are you saying? You'd be an ideal height at that point. Yeah, it's a good height. I did. We'll wrap around. I did well, like J-Lo a few times. She's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and Robin Williams. It was the same movie, yes? Yeah, same yeah. movie. Uh, Jack. Jack. Yeah. Basically, Robin. Jack, uh, Robin Williams played a uh, young middle school kid he was 13 but he aged four times the rate so he was a grown-ass man in middle school Mm -hmm. and uh the lovely ricky deshaun here was one of the kids that made fun of him to start off what came first this or big 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 yeah interesting keep in mind a lot of think i think the apple one the doctor one came right after yeah a lot of the stories that we see today are stories retold Mm -hmm. from different vantage points Mm -hmm. like it's so it's kind of not even kind of. There's a formula, right? Think about it. Boy meets girl. Boy likes girl. Boy loses girl. How many times have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. A ton of times. Just told in different ways. Mm. So what was it like working with Robin? How was that? Uh, life-changing, to say the least. Robin was awesome. Um, Robin was probably one of the first people to 
sit me down and look me in the eye as a kid and told me, like, you got it. Like, you got something. And that was big coming from him because, obviously, as a kid, you know who Robin Williams mm-hmm. is. Um, he's we one of the... Mrs. He's Doubtfire. Yeah, he yeah. was everywhere at the time. Yo, he was. He's he's literally one of, if not the best method actors of our time, period. Mm. And I looked up to Robin. Just he, He's a great person. What do you mean by method actors? Method meaning... Uh, um, Meaning you immerse yourself in the role. Like, there's no break from it. Like, we could be on this podcast right now, and then I could go be a dishwasher at Wendy's. Mm -hmm. Or we could be on this podcast, and I could still be on this podcast when I leave here. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by method acting. Like, you immerse yourself, and there's no break. So, like, when he was... Like Heath Ledger did in yeah, Batman and, and the Batman, Denzel yes. in Training Day. Yep. So, like, when he was Jack, he was a kid on camera, off camera, Yo, how before, fun. after, yeah. Not for his wife. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I would need you to get serious for a second. Yeah. That nigga just wanted to play Foursquare all day. That's tough. <laughs> There's a lot going on in that brain of his. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, he gave a lot, for sure. Yeah, shout out Robin, R.I.P. Um, yeah, man, he's 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 dope. Do we want to end on uh, '90s crutches, crushes, gentlemen? Yeah, I already know who Ricky's crush was. I Facts. know you guys got beef over a chick. Nah, we never had beef. She was never going with him. Maya was here. It's not beef. He had her. Maya was here, hundred <laughs> percent. Facts, hundred percent. I wasn't even allowed to listen to Maya. What does that mean? <laughs> exactly what it, it too means. too young. <laughs> Maya was my too Yo, my mom made me trade my Usher My Way CD for two of Ricky's single CD soundtracks that he had. Huh? So you know how song, CDs, they used to come in like, you could either buy a single. Long time and ago. It, sure. And it had one song. <laughs> so it had one song and then it had like four different versions. The acapella, the instrumental. The remix. Oh, the I remix. See. So That's I had annoying. a couple. I had, I had, I bought Usher's My Way CD. The whole shit. Explicit content. Probably had three curse words throughout the whole... My mom heard slow... Um, the They call me... What's the name? They call me U.S. H-E-R-R-A. What's the, what's the name of the song? I don't know. But I know that song. I don't know the name of it. Yeah, that song. She heard that song. I was like, oh, no. It's, <laughs> it's nice and slow. Nice and slow. Yeah. I, had I was to about to say, that's my super album. sexual. Nigga, that makes sense. Me, this nigga Ricky gave me two... Single soundtracks. I had to listen to the same song twice. Oh, 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 yeah. At least I gave you some options. Bruh. Two for one. It was terrible. <laughs> I was so pissed. I was scarred for life, yo. But no, nah, Maya was definitely my 90s. John, say you have a 90s crush? Um, I'd probably have to say Christina Aguilera. Mm, for sure. Dirty. That's a good one. Yeah, I had her on my yeah. wall back in the day. Oh, on your wall? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jesse from... Jesse? Oh, Jesse. Uncle Jesse? Uncle Jesse. Uncle Jesse? And uh, I was into the Backstreet Boys. Really? A lot. Yeah. I know it was like a war between NSYNC and Backstreet it's Boys. It's not but really a war. Like it's no. not Wars a war. Wars are evenly fought. This is like a Boys. line drawn in the sand, yeah. Breezy. It's not that serious. It, it, NSYNC was not banging the way Backstreet Boys was banging in the day. In Wild. retrospect, maybe they had more skill. Yes. Let it be told but that, that Reezy is on the wrong side of this. Yeah. Wrong side. Justin Timberlake was beating Backstreet Boys by himself. Team in sync all day. Holla at your boy. Do the bye 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 dance. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, we're gonna get this green screen green screen out. We're gonna do that. Yeah, I'm dead ass. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> With some strings. Nah. Yeah. In sync. One hundred percent. No. And then it was a thing between Britney Spears and Christina. Yeah, and even a, though ooh, Christina, beef we Christina had the voice, like, I was a Britney girl. I was a Christina girl. I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was with Christina. <laughs> I was neither. I was Christina. I was Is one of Christina's girl. A Christina girl. I was with Christina, 100%. <laughs> I don't know what it was about Christina. Something about her. Dirty. She was magical, man. Yeah, she was. It was the voice. Love. And then when she, she did bottle? Moulin Rouge. <laughs> oh, yeah. That oh, was yeah. a game changer. Yeah. Different. Lil Guess Lil who else was in too. Moulin Rouge? You. The great Maya. No Maya, you're damn right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, Maya now. Was. Oh, my God. You're right. Yeah. Looking on my girl. That's Maya, true. Lil' Kim, Christina. And Missy. Who's the other one? Missy. Missy. And uh, Pink. Oh, right? yeah. And Pink. Pink. Was in there. Shit. Pink, too. Facts. Yeah. Yo, can we talk about right Pink? There. Pink can sing. Yo, she's Pink dope. Pink is dope. Yeah, Pink, we can do Pink that. Look, amazing. next week's pod is going to be about 90s uh, music. Is, Halsey is... 
please new stop. Pink. Make your She's stop. A new pink. Are you who help are you yourself? Because Halsey is nice. I'm not taking any Halsey. You're not even it. saying her name correctly. Halsey. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. It. <laughs> Shut you up, didn't Stop it? it. My 90s crush. Yes. Yeah. Was unfortunately, no disrespect to. Don't Mr. do himself. it. Oh, never mind. Stacy Dash was my crush. It's a solid she crush. Taking a strong decline. <laughs> she, she took a turn. That. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can say a turn. Hard left? Path. It was a U turn. <laughs> and she went the opposite you direction. <laughs> yeah, nah. Stacey Dash was it. Um, Clueless was hot. Yeah, she was fine. Stacey Dash was like that, that model skirt. back mm-hmm. in the day, like of what you looked at. That plaid skirt. Hmm. In the Jeep, yeah, we all, as if. we all, as if I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> uh, but Ricky, it's been a pleasure to have you. Hey, we it's, appreciate it. It's been a pleasure being here. You've been here. a part of some history for oh, sure. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Who you got in the verses? Uh, Isley Brothers? Huh. Wait, we did discuss this, did we not? No, we did not. Isley Brothers or Earth, Wind, and Fire? This is like way before my time. Do you oh, remember? Yeah, we got to get you a yeah. Walkman. I don't know. We got to get you a Walkman. Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Imagine Shiraz going down... Santa Monica Boulevard, like Rosie Perez and her Walkman mm. on her skates. You know what movie that's from? Nope. No, I white don't. White man can't jump. Damn. She don't like white men. You gotta so. get her a VCR too. <laughs> a VCR and a Walkman. I need help. You gotta get you a VCR, a Walkman, no. and a white man. <laughs> it's alright. It'll it'll uh, take it'll take, take it some easy. some research. Take, take it easy. Nah, Earth, Wind, and Fire, hundred percent. Who you got, Jante? Um, Earth was in fire easy, but you I'm definitely looking forward to it though. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna they're be probably, they're gonna do numbers like uh It'll be big. Erica like Badu and Joe Scott did, yeah. That's generational. It's definitely yeah. gonna do numbers. Yeah. But, Real niggas is watching. But they do have that one Mr. Biggs. Yeah, they Uh-oh. they got that Trump Your card. Uh, that's a wild card right there. there. That's a wild card, bro. Give me what you got. Any and idea what we're talking there. about? Breezy? No, she has no idea. Gotta get her walking. Maybe if I hear it, I'm not good with. Uh, uh, I sang old the people. song just now, and I wow, literally that was just, mad. Disrespectful. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it. Like I'm that. not good with like old older people. older music. My dad was playing Nas <laughs> and fucking Biggie in my house. It wasn't no. I just and, sang and him. Rock I sounded music. exactly like him. Acapella. You if did. You got Let me this hear it again. Single soundtrack. Go ahead. That's really lay, lay the track. Your contagion. Touch me, baby. It's a little Give off. me what you got. It's a little off key. And a man's head. Why are you doing that with your mouth in a your man's lips? Because you got <laughs> Yeah, I mean. There we go, Jante. There it is. Yeah. We'll see. I'll watch, and then I'll, you know, maybe I'll, I'll keep count of how many tracks I actually do know. I think on the way to the crib, you should just type in Mr. Biggs. Yeah. On your Apple Music. And press play. Or your Spotify. Whichever title. you subscribe to. Or title. 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 No. Yo, they got the bag. Title? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. People are... They don't know what side he's on. The side that pay him? That part. That's not... <laughs> you mean, do my Jay-Z that's not what you want to hear, though. That's not a bad side. You mean, do my Hov No, I don't. <laughs> Tune in the title. <laughs> Tell him, hear me out, we out. <laughs> hear me out, we out. <laughs> Hey, yo, B. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business. Man. Oh, my God. Hear me out. We out. <laughs> Thank you to Ricky Deshaun. Appreciate y'all having me. Thank you so much. Bam, bam. Peace. Out with the intro. <laughs> God, we're going to cut the video at this part. You can't cut John Say. <laughs> Yo, hear me out, yo. Oh. 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 <laughs> Fuck Miss Finster. Hey, no, Miss Finster. <laughs>